We say what they can't radio. Welcome to Soul Share, a conversation focused on love, intimacy, vulnerability, and emotional intelligence. This is a different kind of relationship dialogue for those who want to make the shift from the ego-driven to more intimate, spirit-nurturing partnerships that satisfy, because that's what black love is. Black love is powerful. Black love is soulful. Black love is a love that you can feel. Give thanks. Hi, this is Shashetta Kepra, the Intimacy Junkie, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of Soul Share. So today, I have two new co-hosts with me. Please introduce yourselves, starting with... Uh, my name is Shalisha. I am the cousin of Shashetta, so I'm just here to share my piece and uh, let's get it going. It's really it. Yeah. Hi, my name is Alfred Abiyase. I am a writer, producer, man of many talents, and a mm-hmm. classmate and friend of Shashetta also, so I'm here to help and Yeah, provide that can. male energy provide and the, the male, male Yeah, the and the male point of view. Right. This is going to be a show. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the R. Kelly situation. Mm-hmm. We're going to discuss the sexual exploitation Mm -hmm. of our young black girls, Mm -hmm. women. We're gonna discuss sexual trauma, how it's all affected us, and sexual coercion, Mm -hmm. misconduct, harassment, the whole thing. We're not discussing race. We're not discussing Harvey Weinstein. We're not discussing (laughs) Catholic priests. We're discussing rape. We're, that's what in sexual assault and sexual violence against women. Okay, we're going to have that difficult conversation Absolutely. that most people do not want to have. So we're not going to deflect with any, you know, any race conversation. We're going we're gonna to sit in this discomfort. Gotcha. And we're going to get through this and we, we're going to get to some healing. Yeah, okay, we, we, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get to some healing. Or at least start. Yeah. Start the conversation. Plan to see it. Yes. Okay, so did everyone see the docuseries? I did. Unfortunately. Yeah, reluctantly, just it was kind of like I had to. Okay. I needed to see. Exactly what everyone was referring to. Well, my thing was I just needed to see because, um, well, for a lot of reasons, because everyone was too, but because when uh, R. Kelly, I was young, I was very young when R. Kelly was in his peak or even when the sex tape came out I was still still young so I, w- I don't I don't consider myself to be a fan of R. Kelly one so I wasn't necessarily listening to his music even before while this happened but what was crazy to me is that it was going on while he was releasing so many songs and so many people were working with this man and I just find it so hard to believe that none of y'all knew no one possibly can tell me that they didn't see this this man was hiding in plain sight it was the craziest thing. I was just watching this with my mouth wide open yeah. and to see how many women. Mm-hmm. It was just mind-boggling to me. Yeah, point of correction. I thought you were talking about the documentary you referenced earlier. I absolutely did see the R. Kelly documentary. And it was, although it's something that you're aware of, you've seen it in many mm-hmm. details, somehow it still provided a certain level yeah. of shock and, like, you can't really understand how this was allowed yeah. to persist for so long and everyone was kind of aware, <laughs> but... Okay, but it. complicit. Like, there's no other way to to, to even describe. It. They were yeah, completely complicit so with what was going on. Chaos, yeah. yeah, and the thing about it is, you know, everybody was aware, and everybody mm-hmm. has that R. Kelly tape. And I'm, you know, and I will, I will hazard a guess and say that most men, wherever their porn collection is, that's still on VHS and you know, and on. As DVD in that shoe box or you know that old Timberland box, it, that R. <laughs> Kelly tape bad. is there and it, uh, uh, amongst it. You know what I mean? <sighs> they probably haven't gone through it because you know everybody's on Pornhub now, so you know nobody's checked <laughs> that old. <laughs> you know they it's have okay. they so they haven't checked that old shoe box. But if they rummage through it, they'll probably still find it because that every bootleg had it. You know, I, heard. I saw it. You know what I mean? Mm. I saw it. I mean, and again, we're talking about what, 10, I'm not even going to forgive. I'm, I wasn't a child. I saw it as an adult. Mm-hmm. And initially what drew me to it was sex tape, R. Kelly. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone has to see it. But while watching it, it's disturbing. Yeah. It's, there's nothing, like, sexually arousing. To me, personally, mm-hmm. there was nothing sexually arousing about it. Where I think I saw it once in, like, you ever watch something creepy and then you're like, 
no, I'm good. Yeah. Like I yeah, was, it was a one time thing. I for couldn't me. even I couldn't even sit there and watch the whole entire thing. So it's like, you know, my recollection of it is, you know, when people are, you know, telling you know, talking about it through the case because it was just like right. I can't no. I right. can't I, I can't even right. watch this when you see yeah. the urination and you see that it's a young girl and you that know what crazy. I mean? And it's just like and, and that's the only part I've seen. I didn't see the whole thing, and i only seen a clip from social media, of course. You know how they do putting people's business out there, but they blurred the girl's face out. But what was so crazy to me is at that time, we was around the same age, you know what I mean? Like, potentially all of those things, that's what's crazy to me. Like, even just, just to think, like, um, we know so many people who mentor young kids in, those, in the industry. And you hear about it from, uh, what's the other one, Chris Dope. So now mm-hmm. that's another thing, too, with B2K. But yeah. it's, it's the hiding of those things from boys to girls. Like, why is this hush-hush? Why is it not even something that Oh, so, so we could go back these, even, we can go back we further than to. Chris Stokes. We can talk about Africa Mambada with the oh, Zulu Nation. Oh, my God. Okay, we and can talk hush, about... Hush the, again. You know what I mean? But the, the hood knows. The hood always why, knows. There's you no know? crucifixion in that. There's no crucial fiction in any of that. And I understand it was a time, maybe it was uh, things are more accepted. And But the problem is now, all of those people who still was in that time when things were accepted, they're still alive right now. So we still, like you said, have to have the uncomfortable conversation. Like, okay, why was it okay? Why was it not a, a, a outrage? Why was him dating Aaliyah not enough for people to be like, okay, I'm done? And I really think the reason why certain things come up in certain there's a collective social consciousness, I think. Of course. And it's an awareness thing where certain, and not, and aside, like certain things in terms of what was tolerable mm-hmm. in the 80s is not going to be tolerable now right. because people are just more aware, so it's no longer politically correct to mm-hmm. do or say certain things. So I don't think anyone condoned it to the extent that they didn't let it happen. Mm-hmm. Everyone has always known it was wrong, but it's to the point where the, the, so, the collective consciousness will not let that exist at this point in time anymore. And I think that's all because of songs, though. I think in reality, people let him do that because he made good songs. He has a huge... I don't, I don't necessarily think that it's, it's about the music. I think it's just we don't talk about that stuff. Hmm. That stuff goes on in people's families. That stuff, like I said, it's going big. on in the hood. Mm-hmm. And people just don't... And they're not comfortable having those discussions. Mm-hmm. And then they would rather shift the blame you know on the little girl saying mm. that she's fast, fast. That, you oh know and God. those type of things and this is why i wanted everybody to see the other documentary the wow. very young girls Man. um documentary and so that you can see because with the docuseries the r kelly docuseries you see these they're grown women now mm-hmm. telling their stories mm-hmm. so it's kind of comes across very different mm-hmm. you know so the the very young girls is coming from the vantage point of the girls at the age mm-hmm. of when all of this, the 13 year olds, the yeah. four, and you yeah. hear it coming from the voices of the 13 and the 14. Right. And you can see the mindset that these girls are not fast. These girls are naive. Right. These girls are slow. They're these children. Gir- they're, they're children, children. Yeah. with children's mind. And here you have these, because R. Kelly is not comparable to a Catholic priest. Mm-hmm. R. Kelly is comparable to a pimp. Okay, right. His predatory He's a, ways is ridiculous. It's like a Chicago with the Chicago players because even in my day and uh, and I hate to make this generalization and I know you don't like when I make generalizations about black men but at all. At all and and that's fair and, and I understand that. But it's like my generation the boys grew up with the Donald Goins books, the Iceberg mm-hmm. Slims, this is what everybody was reading in high school and everything like that. A lot of men, and I found in my own experience, in my own relationship, they are obsessed with the pimp hole dynamic. And this is how they model their relationships. It's with it, it, it's, it's, it's terrible and they're not even conscious that, that that's that what that it's, mean. you know, that that's what's actually happening. And you know what, when you're in it, at that young age you don't realize it until afterwards when you do get a certain level of awareness Mm -hmm. and then you look back and you're just like wow you know these guys (laughs) they were 
they took them Donald Goins and they took those Iceberg serious. Slim stuff mm. real serious. And, you know, more recently, you know, you have, you know, the Don Juan, Bishop Don Juan. And just like there's a whole culture that. of it. You know what I mean? Then you got Snoop Dogg coming out and mm. he's, you know, modeling glorifying it. Glorifying. Yeah. It's like this This stuff is, the, the, that whole pimp, this all it's all over the place. It's everywhere. Now you have, even with the rap music, and, you know, it, it's like we'd we be going all over the place with this. But this is just to show you how ingrained in the culture it's like now with rap music for rap music to even it's it has to get filtered through the strip mm. clubs now yeah. for it to you know what i mean before That's they the just de de yeah. determine whether or not this is going to be a hit or not it's how it's you know done mm -hmm. you know it's it has to go through it's, it's like this this is where we at this is where the cult you know the, the our culture is just it's just slowly degrading and it's like and it's just deteriorating just slowly and we're not even realizing and connecting the dots well this is my thoughts on it no <laughs> I, I agree and i guess the only place where we defer is that and i don't want to i don't want to defer at all just that i don't think we we take the blame for being we're not inception point this is american culture this is right. This is world culture. Yeah, like is. the um, sexual repression of women is not and unique to African women Americans. Women. It's, it's that's the world. world. It's the world. So it's like when it, when it becomes so focused on a particular demographic of people, that's when I'm like, well, wait a minute. And it didn't start with Donald Goins. It didn't start with Hugh Hefner. It started Hollywood from inception. The world from inception has always been about concubines and women being of a certain okay. lower class stature. So that's why my whole thing is. I would if you're if you're gonna deal with the situation, you have to deal with the root. Otherwise, you're just locking people up instead of dealing oh, with why yeah. they're committing crimes. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's my whole thing. Like I completely understand what you're saying. It's mm -hmm. like, is the root truly Donald Goins? Is it Hugh Hefner? Is it the way that men and women essentially even consider what they consider courtship? Is there something wrong with? Is there something wrong inherently with the whole process? Before we start picking and choosing the people. Well, I'm not. I wouldn't even say that the blame goes to the the Donald Goins because you know what I mean. Something yeah, made something so made him. Something mm, made it's representative him. of the right. You know? It's right. You know what I mean. So it's like you know something made him. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that what's hap This is what's happening in our culture, and we need to have uh, and have that conversation. Right. Like like. Right, and then how do we start to reverse it when we're understanding that what we're doing is rape? You understand, and it's not just the men; it's, it's women, women it's the women too. Ooh, and right like there. you know, you know, before we started taping, we had a, we we began a conversation where we were talking about the laws, and you know, in yeah, New York, exactly where it's just like if you losing your virginity at the age of sixteen, and even though your high school boyfriend is sixteen, and y'all both sixteen in the same grade, same mm -hmm. class you're both guilty of rape because 16 year olds in the state of New York cannot consent to sex, you know? So now all you need is that one parent who decides they want to go to the police and say, you know what, this young boy raped my daughter or this young girl raped my son. And now, well, then you have the counter, you know? Well. They both did each other. So now everybody's getting hauled off and everybody's up in family court or wherever they, you know, this starts to take mm -hmm. place and everybody's in the system. Right. But that's all, but that's all it takes. And the thing about it is we have to understand what is what so that this way we can break the cycle. True. So, you know, so we can understand what rape is, the legal definition, sexual coercion. Right. So when we're out, you know, so when people are out there, you know, trying to make these offers, you know, as they said, R. Kelly was out there at the high school, you know, right. buying girls sneakers and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, come on now. I mean, back in my days, it was the drug dealer, you know, know. you know, with the that's buying you door knockers and 5411s, you know what I mean? And that's, gifts, like, yeah. But then it, and they and lot <laughs> and, and, and that's and that's you know, you know what I mean. And that's what it was, but we didn't know any better. Equating you know, and, and, sex, and, right. and, yeah, and, and that's kind of like again. I think one one of the underlying reasons I was watching the whole documentary. And I'm like, wow, why would you let this happen? Now that and, that goes to the women too. Not, not, not for, forget not even the women. I'm not blaming the women, the little girls at all. It seemed like the connective tissue throughout this whole specifically R. Kelly thing was celebrity and the desire for fame. Yeah. Because this man has been on the other side of the box and he's revered, he's looked at a, looked at as a deity and allowed to get away with things that regular people. I would not let a grown man hang out with an 
uh, but it's a celebrity, so it's okay. Why do we give celebrities and the people of power so much leeway when things that would be completely... Are we talking about in the community how we put them on a pedestal? We're just talking about because it's ridiculous at times. But that's the point that I'm trying to make. I don't think it's about his celebrity because... The non-celebrities are doing it too. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. the, no, the, no, no. the drug dealers who's coming around no, I, high school. I get what you're saying, but I and just the, feel know, like and that's, why. and that's why I said in this particular instance, right, right, because right. there are so it's many not, pedophiles that are not famous it's that are completely... Right. How about in, uh, in the documentary we was just looking, there was a class where the police had, it was called the Johns class or something mm-hmm. like that, where if you got arrested for trying to solicit sex from a woman, you can go to this class, just show up, I think, two or three times and your record is clean. They're making jokes. They're not even listening. They asked them, what's the next break? Yeah. So immediately, <laughs> I'm like, but I, I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, uh, yeah, like, really? Yeah, these, they, these Look, men, they, they, they don't even, and they, oh don't, even, and they don't even care. And what's so funny is, you know, well, it's, it's not even funny, but what I found disturbing is with even with that um, the documentary, the very young girls, where they're talking to the girls' face on. You see the girls' right. faces, but all these men that was in this class, they shot it from behind. You see, did you know that? Them. You did not see the faces of any of these None Johns. Of it was from the back of the class, mm-hmm. and all you saw was the back of their head. Mm-hmm. But you could see these girls' faces. All of them explaining them again. You know what I mean? But the, the but the man, no, we gonna shoot from the back. All you gonna see is the back of there. You will not see a face. <laughs> That, 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 yeah, and it was a, and, 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 again, I'm, 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 I'm real big on root and theory. Mm -hmm. And I think dehumanization and objectification of women is part of, as again, I'm watching the videos, I'm a little kid, whatever, great, great, great. I get older and the same videos that I used to watch and enjoy as a kid, I'm like, this is not, and then if you if you really start to get hyper of where your surroundings, mm-hmm. you're like, wait a minute. Before I saw her person, I saw her mm-hmm. butt, her breast, her face. Mm-hmm. Before she was a human, she was three different parts. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, wait, how, what's the word, innocent am I when I'm objectifying people just as much as the people? I, I don't know. I don't, I'll treat all my women like a queen's. Damn, shorty got a... F- that's not, you know what I mean? So it's, it's like a... Though. That's the problem here when it's based on circumstance and it's on individuals and peoples. That's the thing. So yeah, that's why you say we need to actually know what's what. Not what we think it is. Most people mm-hmm. be like, oh, that's not rape to me. But yeah. I thought it's rape. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So we exactly. know, I'm all for people when they're one to be. So the what ifs. But mm-hmm. I'm a very logical person. I tell people all the time, listen, if I could just go through life based on my imagination, it'll be amazing. It's yeah. colorful. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. I said, but that's not reality. I will hurt myself. Yeah. Self-inflicted struggle to even not know. So why why wouldn't I look at that? Why wouldn't I read every single thing that you sent me? Well, I didn't know before. Mm. So that was new information that I could never not know now. And now, if the conversation comes up, at least I'm giving them the proper information. Right. And that's, so the, it, thing. that's the thing. And, 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 and the thing about most people, they don't, and I've, and I've shared this multiple times on my page and things like that. And I, when these conversations come up and I say, why you, why, what, why don't you want to learn the law? Why don't you just look at what New York state law is, you know, so that you can understand yeah. that, you know, nobody is trying to, vic- there are trauma to, I had to face my own sexual traumas mm-hmm. that I had when I was in high school mm-hmm. and the things that happened to Boy, me. And it's, and, and it's like, but the thing about it, when you, when you read and you hear about the rape the statistics of black girls and black women everybody knows somebody who was sexually assaulted who was raped and you know it's your girlfriend it's your wife it's your daughter and when they see you having these conversations and having the certain attitudes then you have to sit what they're not going to tell you i mean i didn't tell my mother you understand what I'm saying? Nobody. Some of these stories, I'm not going to share until right now. No, you understand same, what I'm saying? Same, because yeah. at, they were painful. Yeah. They still are painful. I'm, 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 I'm about to get red, on it. red table talking on it's right not, now. That's, that's, you understand what I'm saying? Because so be people, because these things is too common. My first sexual experience was very traumatic that I didn't even count it. So I started... <laughs> You know, it's one of those ones that you toss in the in the Mulligan. do not in the do not count, right? And then the, the 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 story that I started to tell was the one that I had with my high school sweetheart, but that wasn't my first sexual experience right. because the first one was so traumatic. I'm sitting there, the one who I thought was going to be my first boyfriend. You know, you you make the the, the plans, and it's like you cut school, you go over to the house, and you know we get down to it, and come to find out because now you know 
I guess it's supposed to be his first experience, but you know, he has to prove to his homies that he's actually get so where's his homies? Under the bed. Yeah, unbeknownst to unbeknownst to me. You know what I mean? So I came there with, you know, my home girl. So they have one homie out on the front porch. You know, that's yeah. keeping her, yeah. that's, you know, running, you know, running, keep even her company. But then they got the other homies under the bed. You understand what I'm saying? And then my underwear is gone after. You understand what I'm saying? So when I'm coming out and I'm sitting there, you know, like a zombie, because now I'm humiliated now, yeah. you know, and my friend is like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And when I tell her and I'm like, let's just go. And she was just like, no. And, I, you know, and even though I don't even speak to this girl anymore, but, you know, she... If it wasn't for her, she was just like, you going back in there, right. you're gonna get your dignity back, you're gonna get your underwear back, you right. going back to get your stuff. And she took me back in there and I was like, I don't wanna go back, I don't right. wanna go back. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And this is the stuff, and you don't realize how this stuff affects you until you know you come across the boy who's sincere, oh. and then you know what I mean? And, and then you, and you, wow. you can't even receive it. And that was my first boyfriend. And then it was just like, you know, so then he had to make that call. To, to the dude who traumatized me. You understand what I'm saying? Because, and, you know, we still kids. We 15, you know what I mean? And he's sincere and he's sitting up now. He's, he can't have the relationship because right. of what my trauma. So now he's calling up and he's threatening that guy. And it's he just like, right. Now, and yeah. he's standing up for me. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? And protecting me. Right. And now it becomes that thing. You understand yeah, yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? And it's just like, yeah. and then it starts. It, <sighs> This is this is the stuff it's that young there. girls is going through, and it's out. My story is not unusual. No, it's you actually a lot of girls. Story. Exactly, exactly, and we have to understand. And that that could have went way left with them other boys in the room. It they, they, that that it could have been a whole nother story. You understand? And luckily, it didn't make that left turn and become a whole different other story. Right. You know what I'm saying? So these are the conversations and this is the discomfort that we have to sit with when we sit, when we have to unravel the sexual trauma that we're inflicting on each other. You understand what I'm saying? And we have to, you know, I don't want to talk about race and how R. Kelly's being portrayed in the media. I want to talk about, you know, I want to talk about this. This, and you know what we're teaching our young boys and what we're teaching our young girls you know Ooh. why you know why is it now that I'm 44 years old and I'm just telling this story you understand what I'm saying it was the comfort or the safe and, space and then when safe we and then when we have well. these conversations online people are just like oh well why did you wait so long to report it this is why this is why because people don't give you the safe space to have those conversations you understand what i'm saying because people don't want to talk people are uncomfortable they because now uncomfortable. because now you see all those boys that was hiding underneath the bed yeah. and you know and that guy who i really lost my virginity to you know they walk in the streets they got families now you understand mm -hmm. what i'm saying and i'm sure they don't think they did anything wrong i'm sure they don't think that they've sexually traumatized anybody all i can do now is make sure that my son understands that no, you will not be out there right. sexually traumatizing young girls. So I teach him the lessons based on my experiences. And I said, no, you're not gonna, you, you're not gonna do it. I don't care what your little friends think or let, what your little friends tell you. You're not gonna be out here sexually traumatizing right. young girls that it affects them years on where they can't they don't they are not able to even recognize a guy who's actually sincere mm -hmm. with them and they gotta and, and walls have to come down because now everybody's guards is up but you know before you know i digress and you know let's just <laughs> re reel it back you know? but this is this is what i want to talk about mm -hmm. what is sexual trauma what is you know sexual misconduct and those type of things. Mm -hmm. Hey, Stephanie, welcome. You know? <laughs> Glad you can join us. Did you see the documentary in the docuseries? I started to watch it and then it became too much. I was, I was like, I can't watch. It was very long. Uh, I said, I can't. I the can't, Very can't Young Girls? This. Or the, the R. Kelly docuseries, which was? The R. Kelly docuseries. I started, I was like, I can't. It was too hard? It, 
it was too much. Like it was a lot. I had, it was a lot. I had so <laughs> much things like swirling around. Like people say, don't victim victim blame and all that kind of stuff. But I don't blame the young girls. I don't blame them. I blame everybody around because they them. Them they say you know they portray R. Kelly like oh he's this predator he's this predator but he had a whole movement around him it it just it just wasn't him it wasn't him alone it took everybody around him to make all of this happen because if he did it alone mm -hmm. a lot of it would he would have probably gotten one or two right but. The amount that he got was because he had help, that's and a, nobody around issue. him was like, you know what? Um, they I was just okay to me as long as it wasn't their black daughter. Yeah, that's just how. And, I and I don't even think it's that. I think they would have been okay with if it was well, their black see, daughter, provided it didn't. Girls, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, provided it didn't interrupt the potential gravy train. I but, think everybody was cool. With that's it. the thing. But like, that's okay, the thing. I don't think it's. I, I don't think that's because it is everybody's black. If you look at the stats, right, but it, is every, it, it, is, it is everybody's black Indeed. daughter. But when you it comes to that, what I'm saying because is because we've all. Well, I'm not going to make that blanket statement, but most of us have been traumatized most. in in one way in, in, in or another. Ways, right? Okay, so Walking it down is. The block, but you know, and a lot of people. They're not having that conversation. You know, you could be married and you could, you know, have your kids and everything, but they're not, nobody's talking to their daughter and, and saying, you know, you know, is this happening to you? No, I didn't have that conversation. Nobody had it with me. You understand? And it's just like, we're not, we're not talking to our kids. We don't know. We're not talking to our spouses. They don't know. You know mm -hmm. what's happening at they don't even know what's happening at their at their spouses' jobs when mm -hmm. they're being sexually harassed in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You know, by that creepy dude who's just mad thirsty and who can't, you know, who who don't understand the word no. And just like, yo, he's up off me. You understand? And she's not going to come in because she knows her husband is going to come up to the job oh, and yeah, make a yeah. scene. And then that's the end of her job mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So she's not saying nothing. Mm -hmm. So all of this stuff is going on. You know, I had to deal with that. You know what I mean? At work as well. You know what I mean? I, honestly, I don't even get on the elevators anymore with a lot of dudes. You know, because I've had elevators experiences, you know, and we've had this discussion on your mm -hmm. Facebook page and, and, and I let, you know, when all the Ray Rice thing and stuff was going on with, I was like, There's, I, I don't get on elevators with black dudes because I've had my own experience with, you know, guys trying to See. push themselves and back me in a corner and, the, you know, in the elevator at work. And it's just like, you know what? And it's just like, if I get that vibe. I'm not getting on the elevator with you, bro. That's just that's just what it is. Here's, you know? here's my only problem, and this is it's why we, we kind mm -hmm. of... It seems like we bump heads even though I'm never disagreeing with you. Mm -hmm. It's just when certain things become perceived as prevalent and then certain statements get made like, I don't get on elevators with black dudes. You didn't mean general, but generally speaking, there are four black men in here who could have easily perceived that as a word. I wasn't the dude who, hear me yeah, out, uh -huh. I wasn't the dude who did that to you. And instead of creating a heel, now we're creating a divide of me versus you when I'm representative of the person that hurt you, but I wasn't the person that hurt you. Right. So to say anything for me, that's like me coming, I don't date black women. I would be beheaded if I said that. But that well, those, no. general, but those general blanket statements are typically because, not accepted no, because like you can't take but, one person and make it the universal why, experience. The reason why I'm saying that is because, no, there are black guys. Like I said, if I get that vibe, mm. I'm just not. And of course, it's not the, the guy who, who did it to me. But if I get a certain vibe, where I, I'm like, I, I just, no. I'm not getting on the elevator. You're not with, wrong. And, and like I'll I feel said, better if you no, say no, all men. Like no. I'm even better if you say all men and douchebag. When you start I, now <laughs> that, making it specific to I, black men, it becomes right, personal. But this, the, the point of me saying that is so that people can recognize that I've been traumatized. And the fact that I'm saying that is a result of my trauma. And I'm recognizing that I have been traumatized. You think that I like that it's only, you know, that's my attitude towards my brothers? You, no, I don't like to, that. That's what it is. But I didn't get that from a white guy. You understand? But I he, got didn't, it. he didn't do that to you because he was black. He did that to you because of a certain social but, culture conditioning. Absolutely. But what I'm saying to you is my fear. And I have, and I'm not the only one because I talk about this with other women. It's like my fear. I There is a level of fear. And I actively work to... Uh, uh, 
you know, actively work on that. I do have that low level of fear mm. of black guys because of the experiences that I have with them. But, you know, I mean, also being an intimacy junkie, you understand that kind of fights against that. Right, so right, now right. I have to actively work to balance that. And because I'm aware and I've done my work, but you know what I mean? Right, there, being you, aware. right. And, I've, and because I have an awareness and because I've done my work, I've been in therapy since I was 16 years right. old. So this is active. What about the people who aren't doing that level of work that, I, that I'm doing? You understand what I'm saying? So when I speak and I make these comments and I know, and it's not to offend, it's just to illustrate, mm -hmm. you understand, that what's actually out there, that fear is real, no, I, that trauma is real. And you know, and I want our brothers to understand, it's not that I'm saying, I'm not trying to offend mm -hmm. our brothers. I'm trying to let you know, yeah, when, that woman is sitting next to you and she got her walls up and you trying to date her, you got to understand why she's afraid of you. You got to understand mm -hmm. why those walls is up. And, you know, and sometimes brothers don't even recognize that it is fear. Now, yeah. I'll, it's so, the level of ignorance is so deep that I'll give you just a brief, I'm with my boy, he's dropping off a girl that he's dating. Mm -hmm. We pull up, he drops her off. And I'm like, all right, what are we waiting for? He's like, she's not in the building yet. I don't drive. I don't know the rules. I'm like, what do you mean she's not in the building? You dropped off. She's good. And he's looking at me like, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. I had no not. And I'm like, wait a minute. Something can absolutely happen between the curb, the building, upstairs. But up until I got that knowledge, I am completely oblivious to the fact that we may have just left, it, left this woman in danger because I'm a black man raised in, a, in Brooklyn and even at midnight, I wish you would. That's my male mentality. So... Mm -hmm. I'm using that same male mentality and applying it across the board. Mm -hmm. And to your point, until we get a certain level of understanding of what's going on, those young boys don't know they're being sexual predators. Exactly. When when, exactly. when another black man calls his homeboy, yo, what up? What up, nigga? He doesn't know there may be some sort of, not to go to race, but he may be some sort of devaluing him racially. So if you don't even, uh, if you're not even aware of your behavior, mm -hmm. you're not going to go, oh, wow, we're about to go sexually violate this chick. <laughs> you're 15 years old exactly. trying to go see some butt. Some butt. Right. We, we don't know. And that's why I say, <coughs> that's why I sent out all the information is so that we do become aware and that we do, because all we can, we can't erase our past you Absolutely know what i mean not, and when, when you're reading some of this stuff and like i said when you know when i read some of this stuff i was like okay i'm guilty of some of this stuff my damn self mm. but you know what i mean now all we can do is just teach our children so that they that they know better mm. and they're not you know we have to break the cycle at some point and i'm and i'm fully aware because like even you know more recently you know what i mean people are still you know um being traumatized and people are still out there doing it 40 years old and it's not even just about the teens it's like you know what i mean when you're not getting consent because she's too drunk to really give you consent where you're sitting up there you know you're already engaged in the act and now you want to try that next something that she already told you she that she don't she ain't down with with that and, and you over. already had the discussions mm -hmm. okay this is where your boundaries are this is where I draw my sexual line mm -hmm. let's respect that but when you in the bedroom and you underneath that you know that henny and all that other stuff like that now it's all of a sudden you want to be doing all this stuff and now it's like no I don't want to do that but just like come on come but on we just to see where this like like for me I we both have teenage sons mm -hmm. my son has a thing from small for older women and I've seen how older women look at him. Like that's nasty. I have that. I have that and, with my son. And, and, and so you know, for me, I'm like, look, don't let anybody put you in a position where you feel awkward, where you feel uncomfortable, where because a lot of especially, and it's sad to say, a lot of these young girls are way more advanced than some of these boys. Like, I listen to some of these girls on the train and on the street, and I'm like, but I used to sound like that when I was... But that's and true. And then they, they come to the boys, and they, they act like that towards them, and then they think... But that's the message those girls are getting sent to. And, I you know, know. They're, they're learning that from... They're learning that from someplace else, exactly. and it's all part Society. of the... It's all part of the culture. Exactly. And I had to tell some of my friends... And people, and I had to check them with my son. Don't you don't say that about my That's son. Ridiculous. And my son, and he's been looking like he's 21 from the time he's been about 15 yeah. years old, and you know, goatee beard is exactly. locked, and it's like, oh my god, you're so, don't no, we, 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 no, 
and I and I would don't don't talk about him like that. Don't make those comments about that it's because if it was funny. if it was right, it's not funny. You understand what I'm saying? Because if it was a little girl and if it was an older man making those comments, it would you would be totally disgusted. Yeah, so that you, and they're not going to talk about my son like that. Not well, in the news. Well, well, that's well, the thing. The they're the getting, and you see in the news all these teachers rampantly coming out, getting caught. But, molesting these boys basically having sex with these young boys and then a lot of problems I was talking to my homeboy he was telling me um, before we came in he was talking about our first sexual encounters and all the guys it was three of them they had sex young well they, they're talking about when it was young from 12 to 15 years old and every girl who took their they took everything they was older than them much older than them from the 19 year old babysitter to uh, one of them got, uh, you know touched by a family member and then another one he was just uh, having sex with his sister's friend Okay, that's a problem now. Mm -hmm. But the problem I have with them, I said, is, okay, how do you feel about it? I said, you know, they was like, no, we don't feel like nothing. They was glorified. Here's another process. So now when it comes to you maybe think looking at a younger girl, you think now your, your psyche is, all of this is okay. It's an easy cycle because you're not offended by it. Or it didn't bother you that you that she took your stuff. She took your innocence too. It didn't matter mm -hmm. because you're a young boy. You know, y'all talk about that. Exactly. It's, it's, Society it's, it's a good thing. Exactly. When you're young, this is how boys are supposed to be. You know, boys are supposed to get it early. Mm -hmm. You talk about you the man if you got it early. You talking 12 to 15. I've been mm -hmm. in Facebook groups where boys is talking about eight years old. Yes. They don't say virginity. Yes. And, I, and I had, and this is why I don't do Facebook groups and none of these stuff anymore because it was just and they would sit there and they would and like that was normal um, and then it's like okay well where are you having sex as an eight year old uh, paint this picture for me where are you having sex oh well on the schoolyard and it what what Wait. you may not want to get to the bottom of this and I'm I'm, I'm being honest you may not want to get to the bottom human beings are human beings Men, women, mm -hmm. and if you really start unpeeling how disgusting people are, you may not want to get. And and I don't. It's it's more than people can even. We oh, help me understand. like That's we can talk about the surface too. level things, but like, mm -hmm. all right, my mom used to work at um, she still does. She used to work at um, what is it? The one Bureau of Child Welfare, whatever. Before it turned into ACS, yeah, yeah, before it turned into ACS, and she would come home and tell me stories about a sixteen-month-old baby with gonorrhea. And I'm like, that's your job. You may not want to get to how wild it's. It's almost kind of like it, you can't deal with the surface level without dealing with the, dealing with the entire but thing. The thing. And once you start I dealing with the entire can. thing, I think we can. Yeah, though. It, it, I think we. I think we, we, we but we it's men. It's it. women. It's. It's. There but is that's no what like. I'm saying. We got to talk about it because it, that's why I brought up the women because mm -hmm. it's not it's shared in the same light. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It, to your point, it's a, it's a. It's a trophy. Like, oh, it's an older woman. Like, you're and, and even how the women you know. <laughs> then we let, then we talk about generational, mm -hmm. right? Generational psyches. Let's go off of that. From my grandmother to my mother to me. Let's think about that. This not necessarily my grandmother. Her way of thinking about it is all the girls are fast. Mm -hmm. They got into all these situations because what are you doing there? How you got there? Why are you not home? You're supposed to do something else. Because mm -hmm. if you wasn't there, it couldn't happen to you. Mm -hmm. Potentially, yes. But then, then we look at the little girl who was walking across the street because the L train, she was just walking to go home. The L train stopped working in the van. They kidnapped her and took her. Mm -hmm. She never went back home. That's in the video. So she wasn't being fast. She had yeah. a long winter coat on down to her knees and she had her little bag. She was walking across the street. But it, it, trying to explain that to my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a first of all she, yeah. she's offended mm -hmm. I still love her she's a great woman you know what I'm saying don't take away from none of those things but I say oh, all the time so we're not going to have these conversations because I'm not going to I'm, I don't want to offend you when it comes to like you said there's so many places because if you like you said we're going to talk about all of it but we but, can't but you know so what? you can't be offended you have to receive the word but then when you and when you talk about the the sexual stuff that happens in people's home we Oof. have we have we have that in our family Hello. you understand what i'm saying and did they talk they ain't no, talk about it you mm. now you hear these super stories coming out yes yeah. stuff, super. you know what i mean <laughs> you know exactly you know where even i have cousins that's you know that's had kids for their fathers and stepfathers and this is mm -hmm. you know back home and yeah. and this is you know and they're having kids 
for their fathers and stepfathers because of the because of the abuse exactly exactly yeah. but this yeah. is stuff that swept under the rug this is stuff that swept under the rug this is stuff that swept under the rug you want to talk about R. Kelly but you really can't go into it because your brother did the same thing to you mm -hmm. yeah so, but, they, but that's why we should like, <laughs> yes exactly that's exactly why we should talk about it more because that's the thing if people uh, 20 minutes of a safe space will create 20 hours uh, mm. 20 weeks you know what I'm saying it's one, it just it, it was a constant sight you can't be afraid now but us having this conversation who knows what it can turn into absolutely because like you said everybody's dealt with sexual trauma a lot of guys don't even know that they dealt with it you mm -hmm. know what I mean versus I know I have I had to get over it it's no way for me to come and maybe tell anybody when things happen to you uh, you just you deal with it sometimes how you deal with it and um, I don't think it hindered me in a way like I can't interact with people but like you said I'm just always on guard always sometimes I want to not be on guard yeah. so that's my hindrance is I'm always not comfortable mm -hmm. like I'm always like what's happening what's going yeah. on you know what I mean and it was just simply it wasn't even like a, a full force or full action it was just they I, I was helpless for a little bit and if somebody didn't come and open the door a few seconds who knows if it was extra four seconds extra five seconds mm. i wouldn't be able to get because i couldn't get to the door so if somebody didn't come and open the door and he got startled then it wouldn't have been the same situation so i'm lucky that i was able to get out the room yeah you know but i know there's a lot of, i'm never going to some rooms with some people i don't want to be alone with certain things i, I don't be alone it's just i like open spaces now mm. I, i'm always in a space where i can see those are the, that's my, that's just my reaction to my Yeah, that's your PTSD from that situation. That's how I yeah. Exactly, and we, a lot of us have that. And people you know, get like, offended sometimes. Like, yeah. like but I, because I can explain it about how you say it, you could, we can illustrate the idea. Even if I tell you this is why, if you're still offended after, then what what are we supposed to talk about? Because at some point in time, you, you people have to learn to have understanding. It's going to make you uncomfortable to hear that somebody, I was about to get raped and they opened the door. It's uncomfortable for me. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I remember all the fears and I was crying. And you remember how you shake and you're looking at your hands. You just remember everything. You mm -hmm. never forget what you got on, how your hair was looking. You remember every and piece of a trigger. everything. You don't don't say a certain smells when you smell the cologne that they have and that triggers that. And, you know, years later, there's a lot of triggers. You know what I mean? When I drive past that house, because I can still give you the address of the house that that thing took place on Franklin and I can still give it to you you know what I mean and it's just like if, if every time I drive past that block you know what I mean it's a, it's a I, I completely agree like my first sexual trauma was at the age of 10 which like nobody knows besides my sister nobody knows and I thought it was just me mm. until I found out you know it happened to my sister I thought it was just me mm. so like now my nieces my do not, I am an avid, watch who you leave your kids around. Mm -hmm. okay. Friends, anybody. family, watch who you leave your kids mm -hmm. around. I'll tell anybody, they could be like this. Mm -hmm. Watch who you leave your kids mm -hmm. around. Because it was a it was a family friend. Because you know how Western people, people with access. everybody yeah. comes and they stay That's at exactly your house. It. Everybody's auntie, everybody's Mind uncle. Mind you, we can't go spend a night, but it'd be happening right where we at. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Everybody's <laughs> auntie and uncle, and this is uncle so and so, and this is uncle so and so. Not knowing uncle so and so wants to put his tongue down your throat, mm. and you're like, wait a minute. That's not, That's right. not right. That's not yeah. right. Wait. And you know immediately. You That's feel like right. you know, but who you gonna tell? Exactly. You, you don't feel safe. And you feel like you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Like it was your fault. Maybe you did something wrong. Because we come from the people who are going to maybe say it was our fault, though. Yeah. We actually come from those people, though. Exactly. They are gonna find a way to say, what was you doing? Yeah. You, because now they embarrassed because how we how are they supposed to deal with this? Exactly. I'm so and so now. You know. You know what I'm saying? But they yeah. keep these people yeah. around. When they come, oh, come sit on Uncle So and So lap and oh, they love that. A couple one of my exes Wow. She had a her mom's best friend. And every time the mom's best friend would come over, the kids would come over, I would never see the pops. I'm like, how come I never see your mother's best friend's husband? first time like one of the times we were having sex she started crying and i hopped off like what now nah, what is going on what's wrong so come to find out her mother's best friend's husband had sexually violated her mm -hmm. but the mother and the best friend are still cool mm -hmm. so i'm trying to figure out how does 
my, like, like that's like on my boy's wife violated my son and me and my boy are still cool like we still hang out i'm just trying to figure out how are you supposed to process then this we can talk about how mothers but, treat black but people, sometimes too. like how is, but big people hang around rape this uh, yeah yo yo part of your crew chances are in any circle of friends you got a rapist in your crew agree okay and if you don't agree. So, he ain't gonna tell you <laughs> exactly. the exactly. thing is he doesn't he doesn't even know he's a rapist because exactly. everyone has their own contextual exactly. def- okay. our you definition mean? of a rapist Except is a dude lurking lizard. in the bushes <laughs> kicking your door tie you down yeah, 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 yeah. that's like very literal, the con- yeah. very little very contextual literal. definition exactly. of a rapist there. that's why most people don't think it's an, if, an issue because if you strip away the title and you only look at the act Right. That's all you really need to focus on. Right. All that, all that label still gets mm-hmm. everything all murky. But right. take the label away from it. Did you forcibly do something that somebody Rape did not consent to? Right. End of story. That's how yeah. rape is rape. No matter how uncomfortable, you don't want to be rape is rape. <laughs> that's how but that's the thing, and they don't know, and they don't think that what they're doing is rape. So when you're saying rape is rape, they still don't think it applies to exactly. them because they don't think that what they're doing is rape. When you know, when I was younger, and it, the you know, you're going over by a guy's house and, you know, he got, okay, let's get some Cisco going here. And, you know, and and, and, and all this other stuff. And, you know, and because now they want to increase their chances of you agreeing to stuff that they know you're not going to agree to when you sober. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? No, 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 no. <laughs> you understand? That's sexual assault. I know you men understand? that don't drink, but the first date is always a bar. Exactly. Exactly like, because now you already know what like go and get a lick it up. And that's and, the and thing, uh, like a, a man now, men they have this uh, this idea that dates equal sex. What food? You mean feeding women equals sex? But then we have the idea of women who equate feeding me with giving. Them. So now it's like a cycle. So we want to have it, but now we got to educate women again too. Like mm. stop yeah. devaluing yourself. It's a transaction at that point, and I literally had this well, conversation with my girlfriend yesterday. I'm like, wait a minute. If, if you make it transactional, why are you expecting somebody to not have an ROI? Like, if I'm just trying to get to know you and we're both putting the same amount of time, energy, effort, cologne, perfume into it, right, right, right. why is the financial responsibility mine? Right. Because if it is mine, if I invest in something, I'm going to expect a return on my investment. Especially when you put it like that. Because they, exactly, they don't want to pay for things. A lot of women want to, then they want to be treated like this. Fine. You want a man to take care of all your bills, pay mm-hmm. all your stuff. Fine. Okay, no problem, girlfriend. You want a sponsor. All, all you want to offer is vagina, though. And then you're upset that they're not that interested in you. I said, yeah. okay, no, he's going to take the vagina. Says he's going to take it. He's going to run down the block with the vagina too. <laughs> he's going to use it. He's going to give it back to you. He's not going to call you no more. And then what? Now you're looking for somebody else, another sponsor. Yeah, mm. and then it's like I, I, I don't, I don't. I'm not saying I don't get this mentality, but then when you have these conversations right. and you point it out to them and then they still don't get it. I had this conversation literally last night <laughs> and it's like, oh, the man has to pay for the first date because it sets the precedent. Wow. What precedent are you talking about? Yeah. And it sets the tone. And I'm just like, right. oh, because then he has to know that, you know, how I'm so, you know, that. And I'm just like, but you could send that oh, same message mean. going Dutch. And you say, yeah. if, if you go Dutch and this is how you're used to treating yourself. Sorry. And then this is where I want to eat. Yeah. This is what I'm I used to. I might even pay because I want to eat here. And yeah. I need to eat what I want. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. You, and, right? exactly. And if, I like it. And, Your company's good. And, exactly. And it's like, you pay for what you want. If, mm-hmm. I'm, if, if I believe that I'm a five-star chick. I'm going to, we go into a five-star restaurant. I'm going to pay mm-hmm. for my own meal. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to eat, at, at least have your half. You understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah. At least have your half. And, and then now he knows what now, you want. Now he, he knows. Know what you like. yeah. Exactly. And now you know what my standard is. I'm not asking you to sponsor my standard. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, it's but uh, this is what these women. No, no, no. Because be a crazy. guy, because in a guy's mind, now correct me if I'm wrong, mm. they're going to only want to take you how they value you up until that point and you haven't proven yourself. So if you haven't proven yourself to them as five star, oh, you're going to get Applebee's. You understand what I'm saying? You're going you gonna to get Applebee's because you haven't proven yourself. I wouldn't even go that far. You know what I mean? Like, 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 you might get a sandwich. You might get a sandwich. If you look at it from a purely transactional perspective, if I really want that, I'm really going to invest in that. Right. So you could be a bird, but if you're a bird with a okay. nice butt, I'll take too. you to the five star restaurant if that's what's going to get your but panties down. But it's, it's not like even the five star. World, like I made a joke with this guy. We had gone out to eat. I said, "Look, let me tell you something, because I was paying for it. Mm. You eat from the right side of the menu. Guess what you're doing tonight? Oh, <laughs> just like that. He was like, "What? <laughs> you eat from the right side. You see what's on the left they side say that of the menu? It's the, the appetizers. It's the cheap <laughs> side. You go to the right." It's the more expensive side, so you go to the more expensive <laughs> side. Guess what you do? Yeah, because that's the job. <laughs> you told me you're putting out. 
I see, he looked at me like, what? That's that's perfect. <laughs> Only because I really, again, I think women should really invest in their own happiness across the board. And that right. means throwing away all kinds of social norms and conditionings. If this is what you want, right. mm -hmm. go after what you want. Yeah. If you want to have sex, have sex. If you want a relationship, have a relationship. Right. To hell with the judgment. As long as you're willing to invest in your happiness, mm -hmm. there's a certain amount of empathy that's going to come from that and understanding from both sides. So maybe I'm going to ask him for something that I myself can't afford. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm just going to find other ways to not be bored besides needing a male companionship to validate my existence. Hopefully. And vice versa. There's so many different, like... But, that's but, so but, everybody, and, and, but everybody has to be retrained, both Legit. men, Legit. men, and, right men and women. That's because right a lot there. of women, you know, they don't even understand their own sexuality because they've been getting so confused mm -hmm. where it's like, don't say yes too fast because then you're, you're going to look lose. fast. Yes. So now... And this is the wrong message, and this creates a mm -hmm. dynamic between men and women that's a recipe for disaster. sexual disaster. Constantly. So Constantly now so. nobody understands consent. So you're saying no, even though in but your you mind really you really yes. you really mean I yes because you don't want to look yes. fast. Mm -hmm. So now you're saying no, but you just want him to convince you. Mm -hmm. So now that he's trying to convince you, mm -hmm. and it's like okay, so now he has to apply pressure. So now I've had this conversation. Everybody said, "Oh, pressure bust pipe." Mm -hmm. You understand? So now we. Now all men feel that they got to keep applying the pressure. I'm wearing, you, wearing you down. You know, the Steve and Urkel, I'm wearing you down. So then they right. become thirsty, right? Yeah. So then the women say the men are thirsty. Then yeah. it's a cycle. So it's like, you know. And, and, and essentially, you're conditioning him to not take you seriously. Exactly. Period. Exactly. Period. Period. And I'm like, exactly. since you're doing this to yourself. Exactly. So now, <laughs> so now when he's crossing that line and mm -hmm. you that no is a real no mm -hmm. he doesn't know that that no is a real no he think that's the no of oh she just needs me to coax her a little bit because she don't want right. right exactly now so it's just like oh now right. she's having buyer's remorse and now she's ha having remorse yeah. <laughs> no th that was a real no but because we've all trained these girls to not say our, our courting, yes. Yeah, our courting know? practices are really it's antiquated terrible. and terrible. Yeah, exactly, and that's and, But I will say this, I don't necessarily want to blame everybody because there are generational learning I'm going to go with that. I'm just well, I mean, that. women in the 60s, what do you mean pay for it? You weren't even allowed to do certain things. So now this whole notion of you paying for it and women having their own is a relatively new phenomenon. But that's the problem also. So you have the women, I'm so independent. This is it. Mm. And then all of a sudden, they want a man to take on this 1940, 50, 60 traditional idea that mm. they have to pay for everything. And I'll be like, in what economy? Mm -hmm. Forget anything else. In what economy? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because it's cheaper when men pay for it. But, no. But, like, 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 yeah, but, like, but even they clothes cost more. So now we're just going to be, like, not even being on their side or anything, but I'm, I even have to talk with my friends. Empathy. I'm like, but this is, when they say, you know, why women are single, I said, but if so, sis, let's look at it. Is this the reason why you're single? I said, you're annoying me. You're annoying me. <laughs> you know, exactly. It's just like, dating. you know, and, and you have to also think about it. It's like, I, why do you want to, you make more money than he do. Okay. Uh, and it's just like, like, it's like, if, if I'm making more money than, you know, than the men that I'm around, why am I going to actually expect him to pay for everything? And, 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 and you know what I mean? Credit and it's just back. like, yeah. Uh. And it's like, yeah. Duh. Yeah, and I gotta clean up the mess anyway. You know exactly, exactly, and it all falls back on you. So sitting up here having him pay for the first date really amounts to nothing, nothing. when yeah. you make more money than he does. Your credit is a whole lot better it's than even, his is. Yeah. You you understand what I'm saying? So what? So what was making him pay for yeah. it? What, what did that teach you? What did that? It's, but it's like really where they learning it from. And it's like <laughs> now we go on uh, TV. We look at society. Yes. That love of hip hop, boy. Ooh. See, I'm not into mm. things like that, but I'm not going to shun my friends for liking it or whatever. You know, or whatever it may be. I shun all my friends for liking it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do, but... I know, judge them. I, I, ju I, I judge say those. It. I, I said it. it. I, judge I don't them. continuously judge, but I also don't partake. It. That's not my brain test. You can have it, but when it comes to having a conversation, we can talk about it. Like, it's on social media. I don't never have to actually see any of it to know what's, what's going, going on, on in these people's exactly. lives. But then I'm like, all right, girlfriend, so you got the... You, just, you got everything like the people on TV. But you expect and I said, but the man you date definitely don't make the money like the man on that show. I said, and, and to them, they're broke. I said, those people on these shows, they're trying to get a check. I said, so you want this man, a regular man, working at MTA, whatever it may be, if working, you want him to buy you $4,000 bags uh, every month or 
ten thousand dollars. You want to take him on trips? First, you got a job. You can't even take that trip. You know what I'm talking about? Like y'all putting these all this pressure on these people, but you can't even really partake in the pressure. You are not even fit to be in here. <laughs> but it's hard to have the conversation, of course, and not sound like you're being rude. Yeah, no one. I think there's a certain level of again. You have to be aware and honest with yourself. You are useless to another human being until you understand what you want. Of course. Period. So yeah, I want this, I want that, and then you get it. It's like that's not really what I want. Now you're disappointed in them instead of being disappointed yeah. in your choices. Yeah. So, so until you, should, no one should date until they're thirty. That's my old school African. <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing. But you know what? These thirty year olds, and I'm sorry, for you, okay. these thirty year olds have the mentality of fifteen year olds. You know what I mean? And All the more reason yeah. they should wait. Yeah, bad yeah. Guys, and it's like, just like, and and when I see these conversations, I'm like. In what world are these millennials actually living in? It's like, I, and then it's like, okay, well, then again, you know, so my generation has failed them. Yeah. Because. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. <laughs> you know? Failed. Because like, we didn't you. teach us nothing. Yeah. You know, we have a conversation about finances. Ain't nobody tell us how to do anything. We the didn't know. Thing, we've lost the art of conversation. Nobody knows how to have a conversation. <laughs> Everything is this. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't even there is no conversation. There is no dating. People don't know how to date. Don't know how to have don't a conversation. Take the proper steps in dating, they, so I think you so need people to don't date. know anything. <laughs> and I don't, I don't even think it's so much that. Like the reason why I keep on putting a lot of emphasis on a genera- generational gap is that your parents, every generation has their own burden to carry. Yeah. So. I can be mad for my, at my parents for not teaching me how to be financially astute and how to treat a woman, but the, the extent of their knowledge was teaching me how to survive in the country as an immigrant. They didn't know how to condition me to be a great relationship partner because they didn't have that knowledge in part on me. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm of a certain age and of a certain ilk, it is my responsibility to take that information and teach the next generation who is going to be, it's almost like Morse law of, like, of intellectual, like, Maturity, they're growing exponentially. So don't be mad at your parents because they didn't make you the best person for this generation when time evolves. How are they going to teach you how to be a woman to pay for for a meal when women weren't allowed to get jobs and work when they were growing? No, my parents don't come from that. No, I mean, just so, in general. That's like, what I'm saying. My parents come from y'all. My parents will be y'all. So, yes, y'all, y'all still with that. Now you say you will be the person to break the cycle. They didn't. They, so now we're starting us. So mm-hmm. now we're talking about things that make our parents uncomfortable. And but we shouldn't be talking to our parents. Things. It's one of those things where, like I said, it's one. Now that you have the knowledge, we're talking to each other. We're not talking to the kids who are younger because we kind of see, oh, you millennials don't know any better. You don't want this. So the same people who are saying we should be helping are the same people we're chastising and calling them ex, you millennials versus this versus <laughs> that. They have their own journey. Their own. Maybe they shouldn't be enamored with getting a job because that job crap kind of failed us oh, yeah, and we didn't figure it out until we were 40 but, but but i've had these conversations when people you know and and even with my generation with the whole entire college thing and you know where pushing everybody pushing, forcing, and forcing, pushing and pushing and pushing and it's just like why i mean i have friends who you know in in maybe it was in the last seven years or so they say oh kimmy are you going back to school and you know, you you sure you don't want to go? You know, get that degree. I was just like, why? I already make six figures. Why mm-hmm. am I? Go- why do I need to go back to school? Right. You know what I mean? It's just like they need that validate that societal I mean? validation like, that I, you're I whole. Need, need That's to go. what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, and it's just like because you went. To, mm-hmm. I said, you know what? From going wedding, back to school. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it falls lower and lower on the on the list. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like once you once you already start to accomplish certain things in life, and it's just like okay, it was on the list to go back and get my degree, but you know what? When I got my house, it's just like okay, now I ain't got time to go back to school. You know what I mean? It's just like okay, you know what I mean? And it's just like it's just. For what? Just yeah. to say I have a degree and it's and just that, like, that is retarded. Yeah, exactly. And and it's like and that's the thing. So that's what I'm like. And that's the thing. And it's like everybody you're we don't want to talk about that real conversation. It's just like you want me to be in debt because you're in debt and you yep. ain't got your house yet and yep. I've had mine for fifteen years. We and don't now want to admit that like we don't know. You haven't paid that's off your student loan. Nobody wants to there's you no know, point in your life and this is, I think it's a human thing, it may just be ego. At no point in your life you go Man, I don't know shit. I'm going to just chill until I figure it out. At every point, every day, you convince yourself that you know enough to keep on progressing. When somebody questions it, you challenge them when you just got this new first-hand information. Mm-hmm. So until you get over this not, this perception that you know everything you need to progress, you're not going to. Yeah, you're missing all the messages. And you're going to spend the same year, I mean, 20 years in the exact stagnant, same position. It's stagnant. All the time. Mm-hmm. Emotionally, and intellectually. Them, but they don't even know that, that they're stuck. 
So it gets stressful because then you see the, the the those people we know. Everyone knows them. Even I have them. Mm. I have friends like that. And it's it's so weird though because you I'm like wow. It's sad almost, but it's just like you're so happy where you are that you don't even realize that things could be better. That's crazy to me. That you have no other foresight for happiness. Like struggles and no nope, struggle. Give me it. I want struggle. Every day. I, I, I was, of my life. Because mm-hmm. everybody's a lot of people, their whole entire identity is wrapped up yep. in their struggle. And, once they and it's that like story, once right. And so, it's like, you know what? This is my journey. And the journey is struggle. And that's mm-hmm. what it is. So they they mm-hmm. they're they're attached yeah. to mm-hmm. they're attached to that journey they're attached to that struggle and That's that becomes it. their whole entire identity and they think that okay well you know what this is my story and they don't think that their story is supposed to come with any level of success yeah. they just think that this this it's is so that their story. Yeah. I, call, I call it and i've been calling it comfortably unhappy for a very long mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. like i'm and I've, I've been i typically use it within the confines of a relationship where I don't. I ain't happy, but I ain't, I ain't trying to start. I ain't trying to hit the clubs again, and I ain't trying to work out again. I'm like, bro, but you're miserable. Yeah, but that's real, though. But that's real. That so is absolutely. If real. you're not willing to be uncomfortable, chances are. So you're yeah, my to- generation. That's why they're so helping on not getting married. I don't really think it means much anything, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But that's because of all the we're looking at all the generations before us and how so many of our own parents don't even like each other. And they will not leave each other. At all. And it's like... And we're still together. <laughs> yes, you know, like, like, they trying to kill each other. Like, you don't and even they like, trying to you, kill each other. sleep in the basement. Yeah. 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 She yeah. sleep upstairs, you sleep downstairs in the basement. Y'all don't even go nowhere together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's so many households that even those children naturally, sometimes we take on a phone. We know it's wrong, but we take on a little bit of That's that. their definition mm-hmm. of a healthy relationship. Yeah, as long as we're still in the same house, exactly. everything is perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Nah, bro. Like, yeah. that's not how it... But sure. people don't want to be alone. Exactly. So people I should don't say it. People alone. will love you. You know what it is when I, I just guess, like, I've always been a very voiceless person. Child to everything in my family. People know I'm the person in my family who says a lot of things. On my side, I'm like, my, my cousin. I just say whatever. So my thing is when I say, like, I have a friend. She came with us to my, to my family reunion. And she was just so sad the whole time. And then she was just making it seem like it wasn't about a man. And she was just like dimming down the party. So then my grandmother asked her, like, well, the man left her or whatever. So she was like, well, what, 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 what are you so, why did you come on vacation? Why did you come all the way down here if you wasn't gonna try to enjoy yourself? Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, I just wish you would call me. I wish, you know, it would be like this. And I so I said, actually, I just, I just want you to be alone for a second. You're afraid to be alone, but just be by yourself down here. Forget, be by yourself down here for 20 minutes. The, the, the idea of not being able to say, tell people what you actually need. The comfort, that's back to the safe space that you can't say to, I was like, cousin, you know, I need a hug. Uh-huh. People won't do it. They will just suffer in the pain and the sound. And it's a cycle. Everything that we're talking about is just a cycle. It's generational just a, yeah. down where you got to suffer in silence from our sexual trauma to these little girls. Like, it's, it goes back to the root of why can't we have a conversation? Mm-hmm. Why can't you just say to me, you know what? I'm tired. I don't want to talk. Don't get offended. I still love you. But people won't do that. They'll curse you out. Like, I just came home from work. Uh-huh. I don't want to talk about this. No, you tell people that you know what, listen. I just can't do it. And do I think that we have an issue in the black community with that? Yes, well, because I'm black. So that's yeah. what I'm going to go with first. I'm a black woman, so I have to speak on that. But even with um, with hearing the difference which y'all speak, it's, it's still different in my mind from the things that y'all are saying because it's a it's a difference in age. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So even with him, I'm like, yeah, that's true, but not on my side right now. And there's, I think you know there's I mean? also a huge gap that relates to emotional maturity. Of course. It's... And it was part of the post. Like, we only ended up talking about my number two. My, my, my number five was essentially, we spent so much time trying to get actual information and, and focus on intelligence and knowledge. But what governs all of that is our emotions. But nobody's focusing on emotional intelligence. So yeah, shouldn't I'll you be... focus on that. And, and, no, and, and so <laughs> shared. That was uh, season one. It was about emotional intelligence. And because, like, you're right. Yeah, like, it, it, it's, becoming, it's becoming a thing where being woke and yeah, being yeah, yeah, socially right. aware is right. now, like, a trending topic. But so if there are a lot of adults who emote like children... Men and women. Yes. Yes. Men men cry by punching stuff, and women are allowed to overly emote because no one checked them. Mm-hmm. And they think it's normal. And, I think it's that crazy. Like that old woman child. throwing a tantrum. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you're a grown woman throwing a tantrum, right? Ooh. And that dude who's like, man, like you want to fight everything because you had a bad day, all the time? bro. You've got to learn how to deal with <laughs> like temper yourself. <laughs> you know? But if nobody taught you, I'm 15. I want to go to party. My pop said, nah. 
I start crying. He said, men don't cry. Uh, cool. Right so what's the alternative, bro? Punch them. If you don't give me an alternative of how I should emote, what am I supposed to go and do with that internalized frustration? Even though it's just a party, of course. it's going to manifest itself negatively in another way if you don't teach me how to emote. Well, one, one of the next shows that I really want to do is talking about men having a safe space where they can yes. actually have these conversations with each other mm -hmm. and then they can learn how to communicate and deal with their own emotions right. because men aren't talking to each mm -hmm. other. They're not having these conversations. You know what I mean? Man, stop and talking we, like that. You know, you know, don't talk about that. We, so we, we talk you know, about that later. You know? Exactly. So now we have the whole toxic masculinity thing and we got <laughs> oh, those Lord. conversations. Oh. I didn't even see the Gillette video or Lord. whatever. I got to... was upset. You know, I, nice. I, I got I to gotta catch up. I got to catch up to that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, and it's like because men don't feel that they have a safe space that they can actually have certain you conversations. Know, I, I get it. I so why. they go through everything that they're going through by themselves that like they yeah. suffering in silence they don't know they're supposed even, to like be a man man up everything yeah. that equates to dealing with it equates to being a man so if anything contrary to that speaks to your literal value as a man of course but it, that's and that's the thing and this is why intimacy between black men and black women are so and i'm not it's, it's probably in general but i'm just talking about us it's so diff, it's so important, important is that we have to work on all of these things to heal our trauma so that we can learn mm -hmm. how to be intimate and have that real connection to each other because sometimes it makes us women uncomfortable yeah. to see our men like, in that emotional like, and i have friends who who talk to me and they can't i i I'm like, you need, he needs your support right now. I don't know how to do that. I don't know what to say. And they're asking me and they're texting me, hitting me up. What am I supposed to say, Kimmy? What am I supposed to say? And I'm like, what? You know, what do you mean? What are you supposed to say? You're a grown woman. This is your man that's, that needs your support and you don't know what to say. And because she's never been taught. How exactly. would she? I know. And it's just like, it's but, just sad. When you're, but when it's you sad. are concerned and when you are connected to people, you you're supposed to come. Though. It's supposed to come if you really care if about really people care. if you really care you understand but then again condition is exactly, exactly. And, it's, yeah, it's and that's right. the expectation like you're supposed that. to know what i want if you don't know you don't care and but that's is, what i mean by what that goes back to what i say by when i tell you though so now you got to be able to receive it don't tell then that's the thing when people are like all right tell me what men love to say that's what tell me what you want mm. they say we can never figure nothing out right? like not even food right mm. we tell a man what we want and he's like yeah he's don't <laughs> If we directly take what we need, you're, they, sometimes they can't even. And then they sometimes can't it ain't even about that. Sometimes it's just. Is it a lot realistic of times, though? I mean, you want caviar on okay. Wednesday afternoon, or you want to check your nuggets? Why can't both? One is more plausible. Is more plausible. Both, <laughs> but here's the thing. Then also, men, we got this angry black women syndrome. As soon as we talk, they think we nagging. Yeah. So a lot of times they tune us out. Yeah. They didn't even hear us talk about we just want a blue blanket. They didn't know we, we just want a blue blanket. He thinks, say, I'm tired of you, and I need a blue blanket right. Now, no, I just want to make it. Can I have one? No, but he wasn't listening to me anyway. So don't even know. Every, everyone's yeah. listening through an emotional filter, and it tends to cloud the, the communication. Like, not what it's I listen to, what I said, not what I meant. And it seems that sometimes women speak with what they mean rather than the verbiage. Like the the sentiment is, is driving the conversation, not the words. And sometimes men are just like, "Yo, I meant what I said." You know exactly. And we just but have to get conditioned that. like that. Like, however, their like past was. Like, you can talk to. A man and, for example, I have a friend, mm -hmm. and I'll say, oh, I said A, B, and C. Well, why'd you say, oh, oh, all I said in a calm tone was A, B, and C. Did you hear what I said, or did you automatically think, mm -hmm. based on your past relationship, that I was coming for your neck? I didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it is. Because mm -hmm. yeah, there are women, we, like we go back to the. I was coming for you and I was not coming for you. You weren't coming to me, but you, 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 you thought I was representing something and you were coming for that. So I was the face of the thing you were coming for and you're going to transfer that emotion to me. So you was coming for me. No, I was not. <laughs> I don't bit. know why everybody <laughs> thinks like I'm this huge bully. I'm not a bully. No, you're you know? just passionate. And that's Very not passionate. being bully, but you feel strongly about what you feel strongly about. 
There's yes, I do, wrong. but you know, I wasn't, you know, I, I like to get to an understanding when I have conversations. That's the ultimate goal of, of a conversation. I'm not trying to, to share be ideas. right. I'm not, tr I don't want to prove that you're, because no. that, there's no satisfaction no. in that. I want to come to an understanding and I want to, because like I said, for me, it's all, it's all about intimacy and connecting to everybody to, to have the best experience with everybody, friends, yes. within a conversation. I need to understand you because I know I get frustrated frustrated when people don't understand me. Mm -hmm. so and I'm very I'm, clear. Right. So then I get very frustrated. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I want to understand you and I want you to understand yeah. me so that this way we can connect and have the best possible relationship. Yeah. I think we need, to, we need to wrap it up. Yeah, I think so. You know? Okay, are we keep going? Yes. Oh, we can, oh, I guess we can keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, so I wasn't, I wasn't coming for anybody's neck. And I, yes, I am very passionate, especially about these topics because it's, you know, it's, it's spiraling out of control yeah, because the, the rape is rampant and people, people hate to use the R word because it's like, I, I even didn't, you know, I was telling a story um, about an incident that happened to me. And then the person, you know, that I was telling the story to, you know, called the man a rapist. I, was like, oh, eh, eh. I didn't want to use them because the because I still care about this person. Exactly. You know what I mean? And I'm still, you know, had a relationship with this person and I didn't want to call them a rapist. I was just like, we just had a sexual miscommunication. You know what I mean? And it's what? like, because, right. And, and, and this, and you, then you find yourself explaining it away. And then when people don't understand, like with these high profile cases, right. why, when they, well, why did you go back to the person if they raped you? Because it's like, at first you don't really want to call it rape. And it's like, and even though what that person did to me was rape, I don't think he understood that it was rape. You understand? Know. And I know that he probably didn't because, you know, I tried to have the conversation afterwards and then it was like, he, it was so uncomfortable for him. And it's just like, it's not, and it wasn't about, oh, I'm trying to accuse you when I'm vexed with you or anything like that. You just need to acknowledge that what you, you crossed my boundary. Yeah. You understand? And you, it, that's a violation. And all I need you to do is acknowledge acknowledge that violation and I just I'm holding you accountable to this yeah. you understand but he just couldn't he wasn't emotionally prepared to deal with that so we never had that conversation and he can't sit in that space and it's just like in his mind we perceive that incident totally different your perception of that moment is completely different than mine it is completely and totally different but we have to have that conversation to understand i need to understand in that moment why you felt it was necessary to, to go and cross my boundary when we had the conversation i was like you knew where i drew my line and i knew where you drew your line and in and within that moment he's saying to me i thought you didn't like this i thought you didn't want this i don't like it i don't want it so why are you doing it to me and you're constantly, and you just, just say yes, just say yes. I was like, I'm not saying yes. I'm not saying yes. And he's going, and he's going, and he's going, and he's narrating the whole thing as he's doing it. And it's just like, why? Because I'm not telling you yes. And I'm saying no to you, but you're not hearing me. And you're narrating, and you're saying that you know that this is my, that I, that I don't like it, and you know I don't like it. Mm. So then why do you keep going? Why? And this is somebody that I trusted. You understand what I'm saying? And I still, to this day, really don't want to assign the rapist label to this person, even though I'm fully aware that that's exactly what it is that he did. Because I said no multiple times. And when I knew that he, it just didn't matter. And I'm like, why are you doing this? Why, why do you need to? And you're just going. And I just say, okay, we had a sexual miscommunication. You understand? Because. I don't want to believe that this person is not trying to violate me. This person is not trying to, you know, harm me. But as we all know, a lot of people don't understand what rape actually is. And then, and then especially when it's date rape, you understand what I'm saying? That gets even more complicated because now you have a relationship. It's not a stranger jumping out of the bushes. Like you said, mm. you're, you're in a relationship with this person. You know what I mean? So now it's just like, okay, well, no, it's not rape because we, you know, we have a sexual relationship. We're good. Me and this person is good. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So it, it gets even more. And it's like, I, it, then when people say, well, why did you go back? Because you know, 
it was a miscommunication. And that's how you explain it to yourself. And then you go on, you know, and then you realize maybe afterwards, and I'm talking about in other people's cases, when you start to see that, okay, well, no, this person didn't respect me. So now it's like, okay, well, maybe they did know what they were doing and they meant to violate me. So now, okay, so now you go and you press charges later. Oh, why did it take you so long? Because you didn't understand it or you was looking to justify it or you just didn't want to believe that this person that you trusted mm -hmm. and that you thought cared about you and this person that you thought loved you violated you and you didn't think that that's what that they that they had harmful you don't think that that's what their intentions are mm -hmm. you think that you're the one who misinterpreted that moment right. you understand what i'm saying <laughs> and this is what they try to convince you that you misinterpreted that moment like it wasn't like that no I'm like i'm pretty sure it was like, i was saying that like this. yeah <laughs> you know exactly exactly and it's stressful though it is stressful because then right. it, you can't it, have the conversation. And then if there if the person is not emotionally prepared to have that conversation and everybody doesn't have that level of emotional intelligence where you can sit down and have that conversation without it becoming yeah. emotional. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like luckily, I mean I'm passionate, but I'm not emotional where it's just like I'm not governed by emotion so yeah, I can I mean, sit there and I can compartmentalize and like okay yeah. we can have we can have this talk you understand as what I'm saying and we right as tough as it is we're going to have this talk we're going to talk about it and we're going to put it in this context because this is the context in which it happened right. and I need to understand what you know that you're going to be able to articulate you should be able to articulate yeah. What, what was going right? What was going through your mind? But then a lot, be, a lot of them can't. And if they don't even understand themselves, they're gonna run from that conversation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes you have to push and force them into that uncomfortable space. And sometimes you you can't. And then they think that it's an attack. Then it became, why are you pressuring me? And you're trying to manipulate me into having this mm -hmm. conversation. And I'm not, and you like know, I'm not going to be bullied. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to be bullied into, I told you I'll have this conversation when I'm ready. And it's just like, and we have And we have never had And it. how would you be bullying him? But I get it though, because it's, it's hard. You know, it's, but now I'm the bully. But yeah. I'm the one that was violated. But you know what I mean? And I'm the one who, you know what I mean? Who had my boundaries crossed. But now I become the bully because I'm just saying, no, we, you need to explain to me what was going through your mind when you did this to me. You know what I mean? But now I, mean, I become once, the bully. To your point, once you have a lack of understanding, you're, you're, there's, there's bound to be miscommunication. We're both using English, but those words have different intents and meanings as we state them. So mm -hmm. I'm a rapist. I think rapist means one thing and you think rapist means another. And I know, when, but when, and you're not going to get me to agree. This is, this is what it means. You know yeah. what I mean? So it doesn't matter what my emotions are right. what your emotions are this is what new york state law says mm -hmm. it is and, but if we now, don't understand what new york state law even is mm -hmm. you're just accusing me of something i'm not even willing to accept because i don't even know what the definition of is is to right. coin i said i said that the other day people love to say words that they have no idea what no, the I definitions know. are mm -hmm. and i get i get i get offended i get offended i said mm -hmm. first of all or, or they try to change your words around like as if so first of all you just said the same sentence I said because those words mean the same you need to start looking at synonyms and, and you need to look at those mm -hmm. things you know but it's just like the idea like you're saying it, 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 how do we educate the people now because we know that you're saying like you said I, I'm with that that's the conversation you're telling me I'm a rapist and I don't even understand it I don't understand nothing you're saying and I'm taking it real literal because the rapist is the people that's on the news while they're not raping all the ladies in Central Park and stuff and that ain't me Mm -hmm. I just wanted some, and I and I don't have the courage to tell you. I just wanted to do you. Well, you I didn't care how you felt about it. Well, you're that. my girl, so what do you mean? Yeah, you can't say no. Oh, and don't don't let them get it already. Then you, what you exactly. mean? Oh, I can't exactly. say no. <laughs> you know? What what I'm yeah, exactly. Because you're I crazy. said exactly, crazy. exactly. So everybody's misunderstanding. And like I said, if I still. You know, if I wasn't concerned or still didn't have feelings for this person, that you know, I could have made a cop a, a call to the police and say, you know what I mean? Like if I was somebody who was petty and somebody yeah, was just like, okay, well, you don't want to have this conversation. Okay, well, you want to have this conversation with the cops now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, now we can have this conversation. But I'm not that girl. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I want you to hold yourself accountable for your actions. We're friends. We 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 should be able to talk. We should be able to have this conversation. Why, why, why can't we talk about everything else? Why right. we can't talk about this? You understand what I'm saying? You can tell me what you're doing with... Susie, Jane, and Mary, if we friends, then 
let's talk about what you did with me. You understand what I'm saying? So that that's what it boils down to. And it's like when, you know, what if later on down the line, I change my mind and say, you know what? He's probably still out there doing that. And that's what's gonna happen. You understand what I'm Women saying? Are changing their mind now, right? Yeah, exactly. You understand these these conversations is happening now with Even with all kind of and online. And I've seen names get called Whoa. in Facebook that's conversations. Sad. Names are being dropped now. Yeah. Okay, so now brothers who didn't think that they were rapists now they hearing no you violated me and you and you you, you and your rapey friends so and you know that's the thing exactly. now exactly so now those same petty women they'll rather just put all your business on facebook the police gonna see it anyway they're gonna mm -hmm. come and get you anyway yeah. so she's not even gonna call 911 now we're gonna tell everyone job, on facebook everybody attacking your job we oh, oh. yeah exactly the so facebook, now, so and, and people don't realize this is what that docu series does. That yep. docu series That's now makes it comfortable and makes people have these conversations. Yep. So now, when everybody's having these conversations, names are being dropped, yep. and people and, and certain people are going to find themselves being held accountable, whether they want to or not. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Because now, it, in the community, you know, the social media community, people are finding each other. You understand? This is why you have the Facebook groups. This is why you have, mm -hmm. you know, certain things where people can find their tribe. Mm -hmm. You understand? And when you, and people are getting more real, now we have, we have my, uh, my show here. Now we have, you know, we also have Red Table Talk yeah. with Jada Smith. People are having these conversations on thing and there. People are sitting up there, oh my, thank you for being real yeah. and thank you for making it. Even, you know, I, I started to get so much traffic recently to my Instagram page right. with people who's sitting there telling me, people hitting me up and your, you sharing your journey has helped me so much and you inspired me and this, this is real for people. Yeah. When you open up and you speak your truth, that gives other people the courage to speak their truth because people are holding in some stuff, yeah, some man. real stuff. And that, and this is how it all happens. And now we talking and people are healing and people are crying and people having their healing circles and doing their rituals and all these kind of things because people are tired. Everybody's tired of walking around guarded all the yeah. time. Everybody, they want to let those walls down. They want to connect to their partners. You're in these relationships and you realize, oh my God, I'm with this person and we have no connection. We just have a functional relationship and we're going through the days and we, oh, your life, you look like the Cosby Black love and all this old relationship goals and meanwhile, there's no connection. Right. You understand? No intimate connection, but y'all look good in that camera though. Y'all can take a good picture. You understand what I'm saying? Take that selfie is on point. Oh yeah, yeah. what? But you know what I mean? But behind closed doors, there's no level of connection and people are realizing that, you know what? That connection is what they really want and that connection is what they have to, and every then the only way you can do that and get that connect you got to do your own personal work because right. nobody can't connect to you if you close off you got to be open yeah. you understand what i mean you but everybody yeah you gotta you gotta be yeah. open up to receive all of that and vice versa and if everybody's closed off and guarded you just you know you're just going along and that's it and everybody and everybody wants something real you understand what i'm saying and you can't get to that realness without doing your work. And that's what these conversations is starting so that people can open up and people can tell their story so that people can begin to heal. Because I feel so much better telling my story. You know what I mean? And it was hard because I was saying that, you know what, my story involves other people. And yeah. that's like when you, that's and it's gonna nice. hurt other people. You know what I mean? I have my relationship and me telling my stories about my past that puts, you know, other people in a vulnerable place as well. You understand? And that was part of the reason why I took uh, um, the hiatus for the month of December because I had to do so much work and do a lot of meditation and I had to get myself prepared to say you know what this second season it, I'm about to get real and this second season I'm about to you know put all of me out there right. and I had to let hubby know and I said you know what I understand this is gonna be uncomfortable for you you understand? But I need to do this. I need to tell my story. I mean, I have my, I've been journaling since the time I've been about 11 years old. And it's like, 
I go back and I read some of my old diaries. I can't even stomach. I I, put, I haven't read them in years. You know what I mean? Because every time I try to pick it up, it's like, it's so dark. Some of those stuff that's in there is so dark. And I can't even stomach reading like, that's where my head was back then when I was 15 and 16. This is the stuff that I happened. And you know, you pouring it out into your, into your diary and you writing it and it's just like, yo, it is stomach turning. And it's just like, Okay, I can't read this no more. Because I don't want to go back to that dark place. You know what I mean? And I don't want to remember when I was that that girl. You know what I mean? And you know, and being gassed up. You know what I mean? And dudes just telling you, gassing your head up with all kind of stuff like this, and you thinking that it's one thing, and it's just like, wow. And it wasn't that. And it, and it wasn't that. You know what I mean? And you know, other things that was also taking place, and you know, other relationships, you know, that I had, my relation, looking at my relationships with women, and trying to connect to women on a certain level, and trying to understand, yo, why am I having difficult times, you know, connecting to women, and I'm, and all I want to do is be real with people and put myself because I want people to, you know, receive me for who I am, and I don't want to have these superficial, fake ass relationships. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm sitting here trying to be real and I want real relationships with friends and with men and I'm sitting there like yo I can't connect to no yeah, it's better for everyone if everyone heals you're not going to be able to have any just random aside ex-girlfriend hey you look good today or you, you just saying that because you want to smash we've been together and I, I didn't really put it together until this this conversation right now we've been together for years you can't take a compliment from me and every time I compliment you you equate it to it's because I want to have sex with you mm-hmm. Mm, that's trauma. What is the root of that? And I, like I said, I didn't put that together until this conversation. How many times have you heard somebody complimenting you solely for the purpose of they do it all the time. sex? So now you don't even know when somebody, <laughs> we're already having sex and I'm tired. I'm just telling you, you look nice. But you can't even take that. Like, yeah. Yeah, because we're traumatized. Everybody, heavy, heavy uh, yeah, trauma. it's heavy trauma, and people don't even realize that certain thing, like you know, certain little things that you just think are little quirks and stuff, is, is a result mm-hmm. of you know of trauma. So it's like you know now, you know after the incident, you know losing, you know your virginity with guys underneath the bed, you coming in, you you doing those checks and you you know doing that kind of stuff because you this and I've heard stories where. You know, later on, and as I got earlier, where guys are talking and they're saying that they did that. So now I'm hearing that that stuff is common with guys. Oh, having their friends outside the door, you know, looking in through the window and, you know what I mean, in the closet and underneath the bed. That stuff is mad common. You understand what I'm saying? And it's just like... It's, it's uh, right yeah, it's it is, and like dirty. when you think about the calculation that it takes to have one sit outside with my friend, and so this this was planned because now you got all your homies there, so it's okay. You got one to keep the girl in, the front, you know, my home girl out in the front, and you got the other. That's very calculated mm-hmm. for children. So. And, for children, and this is premeditated. Even. Exactly premeditated because you have to have the whole the, 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 the plan and the str- strategize that you know what I mean so that's but we gotta wrap this up okay and um you know what we may carry on this conversation next week or something okay so before we wrap this up talk about your book um so yeah, I'm a hip hop author, and this is the book you made it a hotline, the most influential lines in hip hop. So basically, it, it chronicles hip hop and chronicles the culture based on certain lines and the relevance it had too. Mm-hmm. So certain lines like um, "Who you calling a bitch?" and mm-hmm. "I used to be scared of a big like those actually speak to feminism and parts of awakening in the culture. I love so it. so yeah, I, that I think it's a good book, That's but I'm good biased. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we, we didn't even get to, uh, we didn't even discuss that about the, the rapey stuff in hip hop. You know what I mean? That second <laughs> verse of, you know. One of the lines that I highlighted game. is it ain't you know? no fun if the homies can't have none. You know, it's and just that's like, what I'm saying. It, it was literally, I am not making excuses and I know we're wrapping up, but it was so embedded in the culture. It's ridiculous. We didn't <laughs> know that we were running around singing songs of, of rape. Yeah. Like we were just dancing backstage, in the club. Underage, it ain't no fun if the know, homies can't back, have none. That's crazy. Remember backstage, underage, and oh my God. when LL Cool J is talking about and going up to the high school in yeah. his car. The men, you know the mean? women, yeah, we, but, we, 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 we put, it in, yeah. put it in your mouth is a hip hop oh staple. Exactly. That song is and crazy. And you're in your car going to how about the lyrics? Not even just the part. No, no, no. I, 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 
So yeah, I, I, I left know. the PG with the lyrics. So <laughs> again, it, it it's tough, but it's something that I don't think a lot of people were aware of how entrenched it was in our conditioning. It's our power, part of our fibers. It's it's how we relate to women. Yeah. And that, that needs us. to change. Like you said, like when people are, they stick to struggle, it's the same thing we're losing. Like mm -hmm. people are losing our, you have to get rid of our Kelly. You have to wash him away now. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You have to get rid of new hip hop. That like they call it backpack rapping, the conscious rappers. Mm -hmm. They're back again. We have the Kendrick Lamar's, J. Cole, mm -hmm. um, Joey Battis and stuff like that. They don't talk about none of those things. And okay. they still make the same amount of money, but we still see what's glorified. Mm -hmm. The drugs is ridiculous. Like, the drugs that they're, they're young, they, they get crazy high. Like, Cause they're the, younger. Because they're, they're, they they're depressed. It's the depression I, in the I community. Know, but, wow. Access. No, but it's just so sad, though. No, yeah. Well, I mean, we can we'll deviate. Yeah. I'll defer to you. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're trying to wrap this up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, okay, I want to thank. Alicia, yes. for coming out. Stephanie and Alfred, thank you You're for welcome. having this great conversation thank to God. kick off my season two. Thank We Say What They Can't Radio. Congratulations on season two. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>